Hello and welcome to LetMeBoreYouToSleep.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You To Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can shapefully close your eyes. As it's really boring. So, if you like what I do, and you'd like to support me to help to cover the cost of this free service, you can donate to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. Paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. And that would be much appreciated. So... I'm trying to think what I spoke about yesterday. I can't remember. I don't remember. So I thought, let's get back to, let's get back to uh, the beginnings. Let's get back to the the real nitty gritty of real boredom, real. So what I thought I'd do is make a list. So I'm going to talk about clothing that I have owned. (laughs) There can't be anything more boring than that. So it would be different if I was a fashion guru, you know. You'd say, well, of course it's interesting. I'm sure if, uh, what's her name? Lady Gaga did a talk about clothing that she'd owned, it would be interesting. Or clothing that she'd eaten, I don't know. She just had lots of different clothing. And I'm sure she couldn't fit it into one hour. But... <sighs> Here we go. I'm trying to think, what's the first thing I could remember wearing? I had... When I was about seven or eight, I had a jacket. It was like a summer jacket. And it was green. But it was like vomit green. It was it was like very... Um, fl- kind of fluorescent, you know, it was, it was painful to look at, and uh, I did, at the time, I didn't really care, I mean, I just, I was, I've never been particularly fashion conscious, never been fashionable, I don't think I've ever, or well, I have, but I've never pulled it off. Again, I have, but, you know, not in the sense of fashion. And, um... So that was when I was a kid. The thing is, when I was a kid, I didn't have any choice what I wore. It was a case of... hand-me-downs. And... Well, and then also getting new stuff as well, I suppose. It's, uh... Because... My brothers were quite a lot bigger than me. So I couldn't really have their shoes. Because I was two years younger than my second oldest brother. And the oldest brother was four years older. So I could never have his shoes. And... But they used to try and pass on trousers and shirts and that kind of stuff, coats. And uh, but I managed to get my own shoes, which was good. And but I don't remember. I remember I had a scarf once that my nan knitted, and it was the longest scarf 
in history. It was actually, it used to wrap around me about five times and still touch the ground. And before you say anything, I wasn't standing on my head. It literally, it was that long. It was really, really long. And it was multicolored. It was, and if you ever watched Doctor Who, or even if you, you may watch it now and still not know who I'm talking about. So, um, one of the doctors was called Tom Baker. He was one of the actors who's the doctor in Doctor Who in the 70s or early 80s. So, if you just Google that, Tom Baker. And you also had a little dog called uh, K9 that was a, a little robot dog. And he used to have this big, long scarf. And he used to wear a hat. And then the doctor after him, Peter Davidson, also had a scarf. But he dressed more like a cricketer or like a not a cricketer playing cricket but someone watching cricket like very like light colours you know um, I think so anyway yeah it was very light you could you could imagine walking around in the summer dressed like he was and feeling quite comfortable in the 80s not in your 80s, but, you know, during the 80s. <laughs> and so I had these scarves, well, one scarf. Personally, I think it was about seven scarves all just attached to each other. And uh, very big. Very, very big. And I remember I used to, <laughs> it's, uh, I used to put it, down my jacket and down my arms and uh, pretend to have muscles so I'd have my coat on and I'd be doing all these poses these bodybuilding poses or pretend to be the Incredible Hulk it's uh, that's probably normal behaviour I imagine for a 25 year old so I wish I'd kept it really then where do you keep all that stuff? You know, I was thinking the other day, I wish I just had everything that I've ever owned, just had it available to just, you know, diaries that I wrote when I was a kid, stories that I wrote when I was a kid, poems, songs, uh, audios of me singing, uh, just that stuff. I kind of wish I had all that. Um... But again, where would you where would I keep it? So yeah, maybe it's good not to have that stuff. It's the past in it. I suppose that's the good thing about these is I suppose because I don't these are just online now. So there's thousands of people that have got these on their iPads or iPods or telephones and got me waffling on about stuff so that, that's kind of I do have all the backups I do have them on on a hard drive and everything all the, well, most of the audios but I do wonder what's going to happen if I kind of was not able to make them anymore you know when I'm gone will that mean that just all my stuff disappears unless someone pays pays for the podcast to continue so my advice is download everything you know I give if you want to download everything and stick them onto websites build your own website and put my stuff on and then you can keep the legacy going yeah, and that helped me. That helped to promote it. Or you don't have to download it, but just put the put 
the link, you know, the link from the podcast, embed it into your website. But anyway, back to the clothing. Just have a quick little drink. So I was looking at getting a new chair. And I found a recliner that looks kind of okay. But it doesn't have anywhere to put drinks. Because I've got drink holders in both sides of this chair. And I think I'd really miss it. I think that's the thing I'd miss most, is the drink holders. Because I have the drink on the right hand side... On the left hand side I have the remote control for the telly. And I just, I don't know, it's, it seems weird. I, I've just missed the two holes. It seems a bit weird not to get a new, a new... It feels weird not to move on with your life, isn't it? Let go of the past. But I can't let go of the past because I missed the two holes. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make new holes because that'd mean ruining the furniture. So I don't know. I've got a table, a little table to the left of me, and I've got the wall to the right of me. So there's nowhere to put anything to the right of me. But there is something to put stuff on to the left of me. But I don't want always to be leaning over to the left. Not that I have to lean over, but I have to manoeuvre my hand. But anyway, I had a parker as well. I don't know if you know what parkers are. Uh, basically, they used to be these... You used to buy them, I think. But they used to be really... I don't so, know so much that they were popular, but they were just used. And I think parkers were very much like tampons, you know, in the sense that they weren't used because they were popular. It's just because that's all there was, really. You know, now there's lots of different sanitary towers and to choose from. In those days, like a parker was about all you had. And... It's a weird connection or um, comparison, but I'm just, you know, in the late 70s, it wasn't a huge choice of stuff like that for kids. Not sanitary, I'm talking about the Parkers. And it used to, the zip used to do up right the way to the top so that you... I'll give you an idea if you want to know what a parker looks like. If you watch the... Oh, what's the South Park? There's one of the kids in there wears a parker. It's always done up and you can't see their face. Can't see his face. That's the thing. That's what a parker is. The original parkers. And they were great for like the wind and the snow and everything because kept you you know kept your face nice and warm and you could also wear balaclava as well but you know we didn't balaclava balaclavas are never really I don't think they really became very popular in society got a bit of a stigma attached to them it's it just seems that such a great idea I know they use it like people that go skiing and stuff like that they're so good for keeping you warm yet they've been ruined by people misusing them I'd love to have a balaclava in fact, I used to have one when I was a kid, but again, it's, that was just to keep us warm. And I used to do a paper round. 
you needed whatever you could have to keep yourself warm. I don't think it was a full on balaclava though. I think it was more of like a ski mask than a balaclava. But you can't just walk around with a balaclava on. You know, just walking around the street, going into the shop, supermarket, you know, buying some bread and cheese. Excuse me, sir, could you please remove the balaclava? But why? You must have your face uncovered. But that's not true, though, is it? What do you mean? It's, what about them over there? They've got their face covered. Oh, no, 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 no that, that's different, that's different. Yeah, but why can't I have my face covered? I don't want you to see what I look like. I want it to be a surprise. I want it to be a surprise when we finally go out for our date. Oh, what, you, what are you talking about? Oh, date, date, when, when? Mm, oh, mm, yes. Mm. Nah, I actually saw someone walk down the street and they had a full. <laughs> Again, this isn't really relevant, or but they had a full gimp costume on. Proper leather, plastic, everything like the whole the whole thing. Um. This was in the daylight. This is in the middle of town on a Tuesday afternoon or whatever it was. And and personally, I don't care what people wear. I'm not really that interested, but it does stand out. It's not something that I see very often or ever have seen outside of the internet, really. And I thought, you know what? That man has got some balls. And it wasn't just a factual statement that everyone could see and agree with. Yeah, well, clearly he has. But just to be able to just dress up however you like, knowing that it goes against societal rules, unsaid rules of society is something that I've never really done. I kind of wish I could, but I'm a bit old now, really. I I don't even do fancy dress parties. I mean, I I did one once. What was it? It was actually, it was Halloween. And I was at work. So I couldn't avoid going to work. So I can avoid going to a fancy dress party by just not going. And also not ever being invited helps. But going to work, I didn't have a choice, you know. I had to be there because it's my job. Yet everybody else was dressed up. It was a Thursday or a Friday in the call centre. They were all dressed up. And... You know, werewolves and... um, See, I'm quite a stickler for costumes. It's it's Halloween. It should be horror-related. And that's what I always thought until... um, Sarah from Admin came in dressed as Wonder Woman. And I decided there and then that we should all be more open-minded... About how people dress doesn't have to be about horror and it just opened my mind and I just from then on you know it I like things to help me to grow as a person to become more uh, maybe more self-aware and more you know less judgmental so I just went to work I didn't walk go in in a costume and my boss pulled me up because we were supposed to be raising money for charity and stuff and by dressing up there was a big 
contest to see who, you know, I think everyone put money in and whoever won could, 50% they could get and the other 50% went to charity or something like that, I don't know. I forgot to listen. And my boss came up to me and said, why aren't you dressed up? I said, what? He said, why? It's, it's Halloween today. And I said, yeah. He said, well, look, look around you. Everyone's dressed up. And we looked around at the vampire who is... Roy was in the corner dressed as a werewolf. There was Cindy just as a bat, like a bat, like a, just covered in like batty stuff, like it looked like a big bat. And uh, well, Tony was dressed and not a great dress, not great like thing, but had uh, bolts. Um, you know, in his, either side of his temple, and like uh, dressed up a bit like Frankenstein, and we looked at Sarah, dressed at Wonder Woman. And twenty minutes later, we continued our conversation. Um, and I said, what, what were you saying? He said, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Why are you not dressed up? And I said, I am. He said, you're just, you've just got your shirt, your tie, your trousers, hopefully underwear, and shoes. What could you possibly be dressed up as? For Halloween, what what could we what could how could that be your costume? I said it is. He said, "Okay, in that case, what are you dressed up as?" I said, "I am dressed. I've come as a serial killer." And he said, "What?" I said, "Yeah, just." Serial coming as a serial killer. He said, What? I said, The serial killers don't wear capes, you know. Just dressed up as one. That's, this, that's what I'm dressed as. And he couldn't argue. He was like, Oh. Did not know what to say. So. Spent a lot of time with shirts. I've never been a big fan of ties. Don't like them. Really don't like them. I don't know what it is about it. I think it's the constriction. Uh, maybe I just don't. Yeah, I'm not not a big fan of ties. Never really been big fan of ties. Probably because I had to wear a tie at school. I didn't like it anymore. I think if I hadn't had to wear a tie, I might have enjoyed the experience more. I might have relished it. I might have looked forward to it. I might have actually, you know, became a fetish or something. But because I had to wear a tie, never got to that experience of pleasure. It was more of a chore, you know. It's a bit like cleaning a toilet. You know, if you have to do it, it's no, it's no longer enjoyable. So, so I had this big scarf. And then I had the, actually, I had a duffel coat, but it was horrible. It's, it was good, but it was the material felt horrible. It was all rough. Oh, I didn't like it. And then. Yeah, through my childhood, I just had, like, jumpers. 
I just, I just the same as any other kids, really. I think, except I was, I wasn't fashionable. But then I don't think many young kids are. Well, maybe some are, but we just. It wasn't a thing to be fashionable until probably I got into my teenage years, and then that's when fashion started kind of within my peer group or whatever, you know, school. And I had these shoes, and people used to make fun of me at school, calling them beetle crushers. And apparently they were just massive. The thing is, I had quite big feet. I've had a size 10 foot for as long back as I remember. I think I think since I was about three. So my feet have always been a lot bigger. Um, I think the first thing my dad said when he saw me he actually had a go at the doctor. He said, why have you put flippers on my son's feet? And the the doctor said, I haven't. That's his, that's his feet. And uh, I think my dad like shook my legs around a little bit. And the thing is, he didn't mind because in a... <laughs> in the summer... He used to get me t- to um, sit next to him on a sofa and lay down and just flap me feet to keep him cool. So it'd be like a fan for him. The thing is, you'd think that I'd be a good swimmer with these feet, but it didn't work out that way. Because they were so powerful that I'd end up in the sky. I'd end up flying. And then I'd start flapping and I'd land in the, in the you know, sea again. and be like a whale. Except without the... Well, it was nothing like a whale, really. Probably more like a penguin. But it was so powerful... I remember I was, I, was, I was in a swimming pool and it was an indoor swimming pool in a leisure centre and I always used to stay, I used to like swimming underwater because I just flapped me legs very much like the man from Atlantis. Uh, again, that's something else to Google if you're under the age of 40. The man from Atlantis. It was uh, Bobby Ewan. Brilliant show. Loved that show. So I used to swim like the man from Atlantis from one side of the pool to the other, like the whole length underwater when I was sort of seven or eight or whatever. And I found that easy because I couldn't swim. I couldn't swim on top of the water but underneath the water I was fine and then one day I went and I swam to the yeah to the bottom and it was the the deep end and I was starting to run out of air so I kind of decided I was but I'd get to the surface pretty quick and so I flat me, flat me feet, really quite hard, to get to the surface because I was, you know, getting a little bit out of breath. And but I flapped too hard, and I ended up shooting out of the water, and I made a hole in the ceiling. And uh, apparently the seagulls were very angry. The seagulls that were on the roof. They never forgave me. I even tried to make it up with them, send them a card and everything. You know, send them a couple of worms. Chicken McNugget, nothing. Didn't, they weren't. Just, oh, you made a hole in our home. 
Yeah, but it's not really your home, is it? It's a leisure centre ceiling. It's the roof of a building that's used by humans. Ooh, that's a bit prejudiced. So it was really hard to get any kind of dialogue with them. I did try, though. So I kind of grew into my feet. So now size 10 feet ain't that big for me. You know, it's... It's... They're still big, really, considering my height, 5'8". Um, but I've had these feet for a long... Well, I've had them most of my life, these feet. And... But I grew into them. It's the same as I grew into my ears. I was born with really big ears. Right. So I was basically born with big ears and big feet. So that... And then... What happened is my head grew into my ears. So I ended up with a big head. And then my little body suddenly grew to try and keep up with my head. So now I've got this big body. It's weird. It's a weird process. And it's taken years to happen as well. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm 103 now, and it's it's taken a while. So my big flappy ears and my big flappy feet now don't seem so big compared to the rest of my body. And I didn't realise why I liked, I like sitting back in a recliner chair because I can see my feet. When I'm standing up, I can't. Because of uh, so people call it a belly, uh, a beer belly. What they don't realise is it's muscle. I've just done too many sit-ups, and that's the problem. Is we don't people judge? People judge, don't they? Always judging. You know, why don't you wear trousers more often? People judge, and they. Just they don't realise. They don't understand that I'm just too muscular. I'm too strong and muscular. And the muscles have to come out somewhere. But they won't come out on my legs because I've got skinny not skinny legs, but I've got quite small thin legs. It's not an, there's no fat on my legs at all, nothing. Um, they're just kind of they're average size but they're, they're quite it's, I'm kind of more upper body like weight wise um, but my belly is just it's so muscular that it looks like I've spent the last 20 years drinking beer you know and it's that judgmental and even and so I wish I could just take my top off and say look no bra but they'd be lying because I wear it because I do have a bra on so no, but I wish I could say like just look 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 at my look at my belly it's muscle but it doesn't look like muscle it looks like a big fat beer belly and it's just why couldn't it come out looking muscular but you know not everybody with muscles has the shape of like a muscle man or a muscle woman not everybody's abdomen has a six pack even those that are I mean, if you think about it you look at the world's strongest man okay and the title you may say that's a bit sexist but it is just men in that particular competition. I don't think one of them has a slim waist or a six pack. Guaranteed that their bellies are not beer bellies. They are and guarantee if you went to you went to rub their belly or like gently caress it or I don't know, stick your finger in the belly button or just push on it gently, you know. 
like teasingly, like, oh, who's pregnant now then? You're pregnant again. What are you going to call it this one? Hmm. How long have you got left before you give birth? That kind of the thing that you would never say to the world's strongest man. And it would be hard. The, I'm talking about their belly would be hard. It would be muscular, just like the rest of their body. Solid muscle. And that's what I'm like. Just my belly, though. The rest of me isn't, but just my belly. So I've got kind of like this, the world's strongest man's belly, but on the world's weakest man's body. So it looks out of place, but they don't realise. People don't realise that it's actually muscle. And I shall never back down from that. Okay, it's a lie. Well, I backed down quite quickly. So I had these big feet. So I grew into the ears and the feet. And for a while, it was like this head. I got this big head and this big face. And I know that our faces get bigger when we get older. So, you know, just, it's just standard. We, all our bits get bigger, don't they? Because we grow. But... I think is when I was about in my twenties, I didn't have any fat on me. You know, it was just, it was just I was slim and just didn't have any, including my face. It was just basically all you could see was my jaw and my cheekbones, and you know what I mean. It, there was no like, I didn't have lots of chins. Um, perhaps saw a fat neck or anything like I might have now or well, not fat unless it's muscular obviously muscular neck muscular chins all of them are muscular they're like little bus, little biceps that wobble whenever I laugh it's got, I class it the yeah chin muscles I used to love dimples. I remember I met someone I thought, oh, she's got, when I was at school, and I saw she's got lovely dimples. And I always like, liked dimples after that. And I just uh, met someone years ago, she had lovely dimples, but she only had on the left side of her cheek. I thought, oh, it's just so cute, every time she smiles, a dimple. I didn't realise just she had teeth missing, that's the only reason she had the dimple. It wasn't the dimple at all. It's just, it's her teeth missing. So just, when she smiled, a bit of skin kind of went inside to the teeth, the gap. Not that that bothered me. I still just, I never realised what dimples were. I thought they were some kind of special spiritual thing. I'm sure they're not they don't all come from missing teeth but I've only got a gap in one part of my mouth but I've got two teeth that got took out over the last 30 years on the left side I've got a gap of two teeth that aren't there and it doesn't really make too much difference to the way I talk because I use my th I use my throat when I talk and my tongue but I don't talk with my mouth and yeah I think I do wonder like how if it would make any difference to the way I talk if I had those two teeth back I'd like to have those years back. Go back to 1990, or is it 1989 when I had the first one out? Yeah, I think it was 1989. I had that tooth out, and 
and I decided I was going to keep my teeth clean forever and I was going to I was brushing my teeth thinking I'm never going to have another tooth removed ever 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 and I was just seriously I was brushing my teeth constantly constantly and I'd smile at people and they'd go like, ah and they'd go screaming and just it was just it was too bright too too bright my teeth were too white especially in the summer I mean seriously I remember once there was a I was on the beach and I smiled at someone and the sun hit my glasses hit my glasses hit my teeth bounced off and uh, singed their puppy poodle I literally like bounced off and like started burning through the the poodle's uh, fur. Didn't get hurt or anything, but managed to put it out. But it's like, wow, that's powerful stuff. Where are the ants at? No, didn't do stuff like that. I did when I was a kid, but that was silly. It's amazing some of the silly things I did when I was a kid. Armed robbery. It's just, you know what I mean? At six. It's just so ridiculous. So I. What did I have? A, what other coats and jackets did I have? I can't remember really much about being a kid, like clothes wise. But I think I probably had a couple of Christmas jumpers. And my nan, who I love, who I loved deeply, still love her, she's dead, but I still love her, but she used to make these jumpers that I, I, mean, you know, I told you about my head, well, even when my head wasn't big, my head did grow bigger than my body a lot quicker than my body and she'd make these jumpers that my head really couldn't fit through it was like some kind of birthing device seriously like I was giving birth to myself every time I put it on it was, and then there's this thing just stuck to my neck and it was like I had to have a oxygen mask just to get through Christmas dinner <laughs> it was so tight on my neck and my chest it's really it's really bad this jumper but but I had a little Christmas pudding on the front so that was the main thing but I think she must have it just it was too small for me and I was little to start with I think she was just getting muddled up between me and my 8 year younger brother you know, who was like four at the time. So I think maybe, you know, I was 12, he was four. That would make sense. Mind you, he he had, he was born with a big head. Didn't have big ears, but his head, he's now 41 or 40. His head now is the same size as it was when he was born. Seriously, he was born. You know, people say, oh, we're born with the eyes are the same. Our eyes are just the fully developed, the same size, all our lives from the minute we're born. His head has been that. He was born with the same size head. And he looks exactly the same at 40 as he did when he was a little kid. Same head, same face. It's really weird. I mean, he's, he's a lovely looking chap. But just, it's just the same size head. I don't. People don't realise it. It's just, like, wow. It's uh, I'm surprised his mum talks to him. That's something. How do you ever forgive that? <laughs> he, 
she's yeah it's uh yeah she was in a wheelchair for a few years but she's alright now so yeah he's big the same head same size massive head it's not big now but it was you know it's just human size now because it's adult but he was born with an adult size head and uh so I was born with adult sized feet. He was born with an adult sized head. I wonder what my other brothers were born with. That I don't know about. I can't remember. They seem quite fairly normal to me. Can't imagine if I had kids. Why if I had a kid and he's like five foot ten when he was born? But actually, he never got taller than that. And that was like he was born the full height. God, that'd be weird, wouldn't it? You'd be pulling a baby out, and you'd actually be in the hallway outside of the room, in the hallway, still pulling, and still, still coming, still coming. And my dad would be there saying, laughing, saying, I hope you hope you ain't got the same size feet as you had, otherwise she's in trouble in a minute. They're never gonna get him out. Which is a bit rude. A bit of a rude thing to do. It's like, you know, what are you doing in here, Dad? <laughs> you shouldn't be in here. He said I couldn't resist. I needed a good laugh. Oy. Yeah, I never re, re not reconstructed, reproduced. Yeah, I never did that. I've done other things though. I once played the bugle. I know it's not the same as reproducing and having babies and stuff, but I was quite good at it. It was this tune, it'd be go like, it'd be do, 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 The thing about it is, with the bugle, it's all like um, tongue movement. It's all very much to do with your tongue. But it's also imagination as well. Because you've got, the, you've got the tongue movement, but you kind of imagine what sound you want to come out. And it does affect the sound that comes out. And it's very much like hypnosis is imagination. It's like, what is it you want to happen? What, what results is it that you're wanting, expecting, wishing for, or demanding even? Demanding. And that's, that's what I felt with a bugle. Yeah, I didn't really know what I was doing, and then I started imagining that I was sounding the same as the other bugle players, and I just copied them. But I wasn't copying their tongue movement because I didn't know what their tongue movement was. Because they didn't, there was no, we didn't get all together and like practice tongue in. It did, there was, it's kind of, it, it, it was kind of like learned by, by ear in a sense. And, and it is like, like doing like a raspberry. You know, like a, um, you know when you do like a pretend fart out of your mouth, you go like that. That's kind of like playing a bugle. 
with some puff, obviously, and with some you know, air that you're blowing out of your lungs. But it's imagination what the, the actual note that you're wanting to play, that you want to come out of it. And I don't know, it's, I quite like to give it a go to see if I could still do it. Although I don't think the neighbours would be too pleased. Oh, can you imagine? I think that's the only reason I kept playing the bugle for so long. It's because I knew that it annoyed, it annoyed the family. I knew that when I was playing it, they'd be downstairs trying to watch television. Hearing me going... You know, just... Oh, I took up the violin for that as well. I just... You know, I did, I've i learned the glocking spiel. So I did the... What did I do? The violin was first. Then I learnt... The bugle. Then I learnt the glocking spiel. And then I learnt the drums. And... So I was in the sea cadets. So I marched... Playing... The bugle... Many occasions... Uh, the glocking spill again many occasions and also the drums well one drum I think it was in front of me and I like I used to like it I used to the drum I used to, it was fun. The thing is, it was quite easy. It wasn't like a drum set. It was just, um, it, it was quite easy to do it, to play it, because it was quite basic. Um, yeah, I quite liked it. And also, it doesn't matter because if you do it wrong, no one really, I don't think no one really cares, unless you're doing a, doing it on your own then people can hear that it's ridiculous if it's bad but if you're like with another six people that are also playing the drums and if you're in a carnival where there's other bands like you've got the air cadets and maybe you've got the uh, our, um, the army cadets and they've all got their own bands and drums and then you've got the the uh, Salvation Army playing their drums and then maybe some floats with people on drums so yeah it's, it kind of it all mixes into one big horrible din really never really wanted to be a drummer though not like a proper on a drum kit I did learn, I learned to play music with the violin. I actually learned to read music. And I didn't get like far in into it, but I played the violin for probably about a year or so, maybe two years. And I, there was this school thing, like a, a school concert where my, I basically played I think there was two of us playing together and we got through it and it was that was probably probably the most nervous I think I've ever ever been up to that point because there was all these parents and everything and there was my dad laughing he was trying to hold the he was laughing so much the whiskey was spilling out of his bottle he was just and uh, so that that didn't help but no he didn't he, he wasn't drinking whiskey and it was a flask of brandy I don't know I'm just making it up a oh playing a violin with one other person so it's not easy it would have been easier to do it on my own because then I could have just made it up 
But when you're doing it with someone, it has to be at the same time as them. So we weren't complimenting each other. We were, you know, um, it wasn't like a piano. Like one was the black keys, one was the white keys. It was like both were both keys at the same time. And I can't remember what the song was. But we had the music in front of us and and it lasted, it couldn't last it more than a couple of minutes. It was a very, you know, it wasn't like a big long, uh, it wasn't Beethoven or anything like that. But I remember the, the violin I had, I remember the first time, I remember the smell, the smell of it. And bringing it home in the case and having the the bow was attached to the top of the case and the violin was like you know nice and snug into the bottom of the case and I had a sponge like a car sponge you know what you would wash a car with I had a car sponge and an elastic band <laughs> around it so that it tucked into the left of my underneath my chin so that it was comfortable and yeah I used to I had these things these I forget what it was a whether it was chalk or grease or something where I used to clean the bow because it was horse hair and I used to clean the bow and another thing that I used to use to clean the strings as well and yeah all in all I kind of kind of wish I'd kept up with the violin because I wasn't good at it, but I was okay at it. I could have become good at it. I believe anyone can become good at anything if they want to. And I had the ability to do the basics. You know, to read music. I don't know how to read music now, but I could. You know, I knew how to read music and how to play from reading the music and what you know chords and stuff like that. It's still basic stuff, but it was it was more than just basic. And I had, I think I had one or two lessons a week during my play time. So it was like one on one um, music lessons as well as the group music lessons. I think I wanted to do it so I didn't have to play outside and be social. I can't remember. Huh. I wonder if that means that I'm like Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, I used to think, well, I used to be actually, when I was about 10 maybe 11 I was in a group of detectives like we we had a detective agency me and my friends and I was really I really liked this friend because he was different from all the others that I had and he was in I it's quite weird and I don't understand this but I was I was a bit rough when I was a kid um, and wasn't really uh, intellectual or anything like that and I was just not a troublemaker but I was happy to be involved with people that were 
but I also like being around people that were really clever that were really like intellectual you know um, and talking to those people so it's yeah kind of I never never was able to just stick to one type of person I liked yeah I like to get to I like talking about you know to people that were more intelligent than me or that I felt they were yeah and I think this this kid this this friend uh, who ran the well it was his detective agency and he lived in a house and it was full of music it was I don't mean like Disney or anything it was just he played the cello and his there was guitars pianos uh, violins everything he just you know he his whole family played different instruments and he had this room right at the top of the house which was his room but it was like an office he had a desk and he had and it was like admin he had to, you know and we had our detective agency and it was only just started it up you know we was going to start looking into stuff and start you know cracking some cases and things and and then I was there upstairs in his bedroom and he said I'm, I've got some bad news or something said I'm moving away I said what he said yeah and his his parents decided to move away I don't know where I never saw him again and I was like so sad because it's like what why well, this is you know I was getting really into it I could do the administration and and it could be a business and it, you know we could be like the I don't know you know like the kids books you know you'd sort of cracking crimes and was it the famous five or I don't know what they were and but it never happened because I used to have books on being a detective and little kits uh, special agent kits and badges and handcuffs and uh, different codes again I had some friends and they were they were well they were clever like in the top of top of the year like for maths and English and all that stuff but we again I, I managed to be really friendly with them because we liked to do codes and we used to make these codes up this was in the first year of high school when I was about 11 or 12 we would make these codes up that, and you'd and you'd miss stuff out so for example a code you'd miss every third every third letter would be the fifth letter so it was something like that so or every every letter would actually just a simple code like A would actually be um, D and then so every other letter would be three ahead and then you'd be able to sort of put a uh, a big like conversation together that was secret that no one else knew what it was and we would have a book of codes and then you could sort of choose which code you wanted to use so no one wouldn't be able to figure it out so they were like I guess really good at maths I was just enjoyed doing that I was never really good at maths but I enjoyed the codes putting codes together because it was secret and it was fun exciting and I decided to be the Joker no the Riddler not the Joker the Riddler I decided to be the Riddler like from Batman and I used to um, we used to kind of I used to put riddles together and hide stuff around the school and you know people used to search for them like with my friends and I'd put these riddle together and maybe make it rhyme and 
and the teachers weren't too happy. Apparently, I was supposed to spend some time in class, but it was fun while it lasted. It only lasted, for, I think, for the first year, and then, yeah, kind of, I made my own amusement up. But yeah, I've, I was going to talk about my clothes. I have to do it another time because I've run out of time yet again. Sixty-five minutes of nothing. <sighs> well, thank you for listening, and I'll speak to you next time. Hopefully, it bored you to sleep. If it didn't. I will talk about my clothes another time, I promise. Bye.